Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number seven in our most excellent series of Arduino tutorials, the new, the improved Arduino tutorials. So I hope you guys will pull your, pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee, no sugar, black iced coffee, okay? That's what you need to get through this lesson. That is very, very good. Also, need you to get out your eLego Super Starter Kit. If you haven't picked one up yet, click in on the link in uh, the description below and you can pick one up for about $35. And it is a most excellent value and what I will be using for all of the remaining tutorials in this series. Okay, so what is this lesson going to be about? We are going to learn how to do analog writes with the Arduino. What have we learned so far on the Arduino? We have learned how to do digital writes where we can take one of the pins and we can set it high or low, digital write high or digital write low. We have 13 pins. We can use pins 2 through 13 to do a digital write. We can turn those pins on or high or we can turn them off. But you ask, what happens if I want one of the in-between voltages? I want something between zero volts and five volts. Well, we can sort of do that with a command called analog write. I say sort of do it because there are a few caveats which I will explain in the next video. But for right now, let's just consider it a uh, an analog voltage and we'll talk more about the nuts and bolts of it in the next video. So. What do we need to get out to do this project? We need to have, uh, let's see, I, I will go here. I will get out of your way. Is that far enough? I think that's far enough. So what you need is you need to get your Arduino. You need two wires. You need your breadboard. You need a red LED, a red LED, and you need your 330 ohm resistor. And so we are going to hook this circuit up again. And we've done this before. I'm going to go a little faster because we did it, I believe, in lesson number three, where we talked about how a breadboard works. And then we did it again in lesson uh, number six, where we built a binary counter. So you've done this a couple of times. I'm going to go faster, but just real quick, we need to co connect to a pin to provide the voltage. We'll go through the resistor to the long leg of the LED, short, short leg of the LED, then back to ground. Okay, so we've done that a few times. I will go a little bit faster this time because you should pretty much understand that. But I do have to tell you something very important. And let's see if I can get this to focus. I wish I had a better document camera. I really did. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Now, in the earlier digital writes, you could use anything from pin 2 to pin 13. You could turn it on or off. In the analog uh, write, only some of the pins will work. And it is the pins that have the squiggly. Okay, do you see pin 3 has the squiggly byte? Let's see if I can point at the squiggly. It's kind of hard. The squiggly, there it is. Pin 3, pin 5, pin 6 pin 9, 10, and 11. So you have to use one of those if you want to do an analog write. 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, or 11. I think I'll use pin 9 just because I can. And I am going to go a little bit faster here because you guys ought to know how to hook this stuff up. So I go to pin 9 and then I bring that voltage from pin 9 over. I think I'm going to put it in column 15. It doesn't matter. You can put it in whatever column. Okay, then I need my resistor. One leg of the resistor is going to go into column 15. I'll put the other one in column 20, but again, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is one leg of the resistor has to be in the same <clears throat> column, <clears throat> sorry, the same column as this red wire. Now I bring in my LED and I put the long leg in the column with the other leg of the resistor. And then the other leg of the LED, I jump across, I jump across this trench. And because the column here is not connected to the column below the trench. And that way, it looks like I'm still in the same column, but the two legs of the LED are not connected. Okay, so that is all connected. And then I am ready to go, right? No, what do I need to hook up? I need to hook up the bottom of the uh, leg of the LED, the short leg of the LED, 
to the ground. Okay, and so I have a convenient black wire here. So I will go to that same column as the short leg of the LED. And then I will come back to GND or ground that is by pin 13. Now notice here I only need one ground. <clears throat> and so I don't need to set up a ground rail down here. And if I don't need a ground rail, I don't set up a ground rail. And if I only need one ground, I do not need a ground rail. Okay, so now we have got our circuit built. What do we do now? We open up the Arduino IDE, and you can see that here, and we start writing our code. So how many pins do I have? I have one pin that I'm using. It's pin 9. And remember, I do not want to see you using constants anywhere in your code. So we are going to use variables. So instead of putting nine in, you know, all throughout the program, we're going to set it up here. What kind of variable is it going to be? It is going to be an integer. So we declare it as int. And then I will call it red pin. Okay. Or yeah, red pin is good. And then that's going to be equal to pin nine. So now anytime I want to go and connect to the red LED, all I got to do is just put in red pin. Okay. Now we are using pin nine and therefore what do I need to do in the void setup? Pin mode, right? Got to do a pin mode. So I type pin mode and then what pin? Well, the red pin. And then what do I want to set it at? Output, all capitals, all almost all commands end in a semicolon. So there I am ready to go. Now down here, I am going to turn the LED on in the void loop. But instead of doing a digital write, I will do an analog write. So analog write. Okay, do you see if I use the capitalization write, it turns that happy little orange color analog write with capital W, there are two parameters. The first is what pin you want to use. Well, I want to use red pin. Okay, red pin. And then what value? Okay, now this is where things are a little different. Okay, this is where things are a little different. Before you just said hi or you said low. But now you can put in the in-between values, and this is where it is a little funny. So let me come back over here and show this where you can see it. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so the parameter, the second parameter is not high or low. It is a number between 0 and 255. Okay, that sounds strange, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Zero corresponds to zero volts. And 255 does not correspond to 255 volts. It corresponds to 5 volts. Okay, now where does a crazy number like 255 come? Well, let's think about binary. Remember binary? We start with 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and then 256. Okay, so this would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This would be like 8 bits. Okay, so like if I have 2 raised to the 8, I'm going to check that just to make sure with my trusty calculator. 2 raised to the 8 is 256. Okay, so what this is saying is, is that 256, this would be considered like you have eight bits of resolution in the voltage that you can create because two to the eight is 256. But what you got to remember is it corresponds to five volts. Now you ask, why does it not go between zero and 256? Why does it go between zero and 255? Because you have 256 bits and zero takes one of those. And so if you start counting at zero and you've got 256 slots, you have to start at two, you have to stop at 255. Does that make sense? If we started at one, 
we could go to 256, but since we're starting at zero, we stop at 255 to use up our 256 slots. Okay, so let's just review how this works. If you write a value of zero, you will get zero volts. If you write a value of 255, you will get five volts. Okay, and it scales in between there. And so like if you wrote, let's say 125, okay, that would be about two and a half volts. Now I know, I know it doesn't work exactly that way, but we'll talk more about the finer points in the next video, okay? So you've got to put in a number between zero and 255. Okay, I'll just say like, uh, what if we wanted to, let's come back over here. Okay, so we got to put our parameter in here. So let's say that I wanted to do the same thing as a digital write high with a analog write. Well, I would say analog write red pin and then 255, and that would be the same thing as an analog write high. Right. Okay. Why are you screaming at me? No, 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 no. What? We do not use numbers down here, right? We create a new variable up here. What are we going to call it? Let's call it, uh, it's, uh, it's an int. Okay. We're going to call it bright. Like how bright do you want it? And we'll set that to 255. Now, what do we write down here? Well, we write the brightness, which is the variable bright. All right, always use variables, don't use constants down here. It's good programming practice. Okay, so this should do the same thing as a an analog write red pin bright at 255, should do the same thing as a digital write high. So let's see if we can download this and see what happens. And uh, let me go back over here. I gotta get a better shot. Okay, here we go. Boom, look at that. It came on. It came on. What if I wanted to do the same thing as a digital write uh, red pin low? Well, I would set brightness to what? To zero. Okay, and now let's download that. And then let's watch over here. Boom, it went out. It went off. Okay, what do you want me to do now? Well, let's do an in-between. Let's do like 125. Okay, and so we'll download that. Boom. Man, this looks like half brightness to me, but it's kind of saturating the camera, so you can't really see it. I'll probably have to turn this down. Like, let's turn it down to a 5, and you can probably see it dim if I turn it to a 5. Okay. Yeah, you can see that's kind of really dim there. I wonder if I lay it over, if you can see it better. I can kind of bend it over like that. Maybe you can see it. Yeah, you see it's just sort of barely on there. So let's go 10. And then when I go 10, let's see if we can see it get a little brighter. Okay, yeah, a little brighter. Let's go 100. Boom. Okay, let's go 255. Okay, full brightness. So, we have done it. Analog rights, and this was a pretty short video, okay, but I want you guys to follow along, play along with this. Some of the things that we learned is we learned that we use variables up here, and besides digital right, we can do an analog right, and we can get the in-between values. Okay, would love to hear your comments down below. Would love you to give me a thumbs up. Like to interact with you guys down in the comments. And so I hope I will hear from you. Think about sharing this video. Think about subscribing to the channel. Okay, Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. Next lesson up, we're going to go in a little more detail and show you how this analog right really works, like what's really going on. It's, it's like we're really, I'll give you a hint, we're simulating, we are simulating uh, uh, analog voltages. We're not really doing analog voltages, but we'll talk about that next time. Okay, what kind of assignment can I give you? Okay, I want you to take this and I want you to turn it very dim 
and then leave it for five seconds and then have it go intermediate for five seconds and then have it go brighter for five seconds where you sort of do analog right wait or analog right delay analog right delay analog right delay and then play with the brightness values so you would have like brightness one brightness two brightness three brightness four brightness five so you sort of apply in your program those different brightnesses and then you can watch it sort of step up in value so I want you to play around with this and do more than just this one analog right and I do want to give you homeworks and I do want you to do these things because the problem is it makes sense when you watch me do it and you can copy what I'm doing but you got to get out there a little bit on your own you got to develop your confidence where you go out and you do some programming on your own and then when it doesn't work you have to go in and you have to figure out why it doesn't work and if you write programs on your own you'll make mistake then when you make mistakes you'll learn to troubleshoot okay guys this is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com enjoying my mug of coffee and I will talk to you guys later.